Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. And I got a haircut. <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to not having the length that I used to have. My hair was probably like down past my area. I really, really like it so far. Sometimes you just need a good change and I've been feeling that a lot lately. I don't know if any of you all know, but I have taken a little bit of a break from Twitch lately. Hi, kitty. And this is Pixel. Pixel came in yesterday a little bit during last episode, but I don't think I actually said her name. We've had Pixel for a little bit. She's about three months old now and she's getting so big. She was so tiny when we got her a month ago, but I'm still trying to get used to like having a cat around. She likes to sleep under my monitor and whenever I like mess with my earbuds, she wants to attack them and start chewing up the cord. She's so sweet and she loves cuddles. And I have this crazy schedule that I've been doing for the past month now where I'm waking up at 3 a.m. And I know it sounds wild, but when you have a kid, sometimes that like 6 or 7 a.m. Oh, kitty cat touched something. Sometimes when you have a kid that like 6 or 7 a.m. wake up time can be really hard to work around. And I wanted some more time for myself. So I started this crazy schedule where I wake up at 3 a.m. And I pretty much just game for a couple hours and then I hop on around five and get some of my work stuff done. I don't remember where I was going with this story or why I'm telling you all this because the cat's distracting me. So today we're hopping right back into Mass Effect 3. I am super excited to see what happens with this quest line with the bomb. That is the number one thing that I wanted to focus on today coming in. From there, I think we're probably gonna go on and try to rescue the Krogans that went down that Rex wants us to go try to rescue. I can't remember if it was Reaper related or not, but I have to assume that it is Reaper related. So I am excited to hop in. I know that today might be a combat heavy day, so I'm very excited about that. Also, as we get closer and closer to the holidays, I just wanna wish you all a very happy holiday. And I hope that you all are keeping your stress levels under wraps because I know this time of year can be super hard for some people. And I just want you all to know that you're not alone and that I also deal with a lot of anxieties. I think it's because I am a very big introvert. I'm also pretty empathic. So I feel like I feel everybody else's anxiety and that I just kind of keep it as my own. I just want you all to know that it's okay to feel this way at this time. It is a very crazy mayhem time as we wrap up the end of December and go into the holidays however you guys celebrate them. I hope that you all can find some time to relax, unwind, grab a drink of something warm. But I think we're ready to hop back in. I have my chai tea. I have my kitty cat sleeping here. Looking forward to the action and the adventures and diving deeper into some of the stories today. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so today we are going to focus on Tuchanka Bomb and also the one where we rescue the Krogans. Oh, we're dealing with Arachni, so it's not interesting. Okay, so a Krogan scouting team has gone missing while investigating rumors of activity at the Arachni Relay. Investigate the missing team and find out what happened. So we could potentially run into some Rachni over there. I thought it was like Reaper related, but interesting. Okay. I was wondering when we were finally going to get into some Rachni stuff in the third game. Um, so we might actually get some of that today. So it looks like the city ruins locate bomb. Cure the genophage is actually on there now. Wow. I'm not ready to do any priority missions because I have seen the tips in the comment section about making sure that I have finished up everything else before I start a priority mission. So we're probably gonna go around and do a lot of the N7 missions and anyone that's not marked priority for a little bit. Um, at least for now. So it might be like a couple episodes, maybe next episode, depending on how long these take today. 
we could get back into a priority mission, but I don't want to miss out on any sort of side questing or anything like that because I know that it's really good for our war asset score and we need all the help that we can get, especially with my decisions. So I think we should not focus on priority missions for just a little bit and finish up some of these side quests that we have. I think for this mission, I'm gonna bring Garrus still, of course, and probably Liara. And I'm bringing Liara because I wanna see what she has to add in about everything that's going on with Cerberus, this bomb and the Turians. And I just want to see what her dialogue is. Um, Javik was really cool to bring along because of his past as a soldier, but I just want to see the different dynamic between like Leara and Garrus. I feel like the last time we brought them both out together, their banter together is really, it's really fun to, to see. I think I'm going to switch her over to the executioner as well and just give her what I've got. And probably over to the Punisher. Was she running this one before? The fire rate is a bit better. But the damage on this is so good. Mm, okay. And then for Garrus, I think I'm gonna keep him with the Maddox. Although he does really, he does really awesome with the particle rifle. So let's go ahead and switch him back to that. And I'm gonna keep the harpoon on him too. Uh, we have five points. I could throw them into disruptor ammo. Increase ammo capacity by 30%, headshot damage. Yeah, we're gonna go with headshot damage for sure. Garrus has three points. I think I'm gonna keep it until I can upgrade one of these three. I never really use proximity mine on him just because I already have bombs of my own. So we'll wait on that one. And then actually, I'm gonna throw these into pure biotic for Liara. Weapon damage or power force and duration. Yeah, let's do power force and duration. I'll throw the other three into warp ammo. Okay. <clears throat> Normandy Shuttle, this is Lieutenant Victus with the 9th Platoon. Do you copy? We hear you, 9th Platoon. We're approaching the bomb site, Commander. Getting bounced around pretty bad. This is as close as we get, Lieutenant. Look for somewhere to set your platoon down. Copy that. Talk to me about this Cerberus bomb. It's not Cerberus, Commander. It's Turian. What do you mean, Turian? It was planted centuries ago, after the Krogan Rebellions. The bomb was a safeguard against another galactic war. Brutal, but it makes a certain kind of sense. Put the Krogan down hard if they tried anything. Wow, that is crazy. This is not where I was expecting it to go. Oh my gosh. So it was like a fail safe in a way. I understand the Turians doing it. They're a big military species, so it makes sense that they would have like a fail safe in case the genophage didn't work or in case of anything. I don't think it was a mistake because it was so long ago. I mean, they were just trying to get the Krogan rebellions to stop. They were trying to get all of the pain and war to stop. I, I get it. Makes sense. Couldn't trust the Krogan <laughs> to play nice. But right now we focus on disarming that bomb. Yes, but Cerberus found it. Detonation means all out war between my people and the Krogan. Right. Where is it? Those buildings ahead. Cerberus brought equipment to dig it up. Jeez. The ninth platoon will cover your flank, Commander. With all this activity, the Krogan have to know something's up. Yeah. Then we can't fail, Commander. Copy that, Lieutenant. Oh, man, this is nuts. So Cerberus is trying to start the war. Crazy. Whoa, is this what we're walking into? Are those Cerberus troops? Oh, my God. All right. So we're coming like right into this. Uh, let's throw Overlord up there in four, Singularity, and then Warp. Um, 
Jeez. Okay, we need to drop those. This is nuts. Oh, I missed. This is crazy. Holy. Wow, this is nuts. Alright, some sort of generator was there. I just reactivated it. Yeah, we definitely do. That was crazy. Okay, here's another generator. Okay, is that everything? Shepard, that was we need to keep moving. Yeah, that was intense. Once we reach the bomb, I'll need to reprogram the trigger mechanism. Copy that. No trigger, no explosion. And scissor. This looks like a sniper rifle. Is this a it kind of looks like a right yeah it kind of looks like a sniper rifle shotgun blade attachment <laughs> nice great Have some more enemies bomb over there? Yep. It's quiet again. Jeez, these swarms are intense. Over to the left, Shepard. A way out. Okay. Rosenkov materials. Okay. It's dark over here. Make sure I didn't forget anything over in this area. I don't see anything. I can't believe that the bomb is from the Turians. What a plot twist. And this is also one of the other reasons why I talk to you guys about my thoughts and my theories, because it's really cool to be like proven wrong and see like what I think is actually about to happen. And then it's nothing like what actually happens. And I'm sure like when you all played the game for the first time, you also have like theories about what you think is going on. And it's just really cool to get like disproven and for the plot twist to just we go the and then so hard. 
pretty extreme, but mm -hmm. those were desperate times. Yeah, they were. After all this, to lose everything in a flash, it's monstrous. Yeah, but yeah, Angel Liara, Angel Liara. Yeah, but it was so long ago. Like they, it was their failsafe. They had to do it in order for the Krogan rebellions to stop. It makes sense. It's crazy and it's terrible, but it makes sense that why they did it. In a way, it's kind of a kindness that they chose to use the genophage instead of the bombs. Because I feel like the bomb would have just destroyed their entire planet. There wouldn't have been broken. Mortar fire. Okay. Where is that coming from? It sounded like it was coming from like right here. Maybe someone left their radio over here or something. <laughs> Got some meds, pistol scope, nice. They're leaving? Well, they're not leaving because we murdered them. Why are they yeeting out? Data pad. Nice. Cerberus is leaving. Yeah, why are they leaving? That doesn't make any sense. Does it mean that they already have the bomb? This ramp, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're just like piecing out right now. I wonder. I can't believe it remained undetected for so long. That's the bomb. It must have been far enough underground to stay hidden. Cerberus had to dig it out. I hope Victus knows what he's doing. We won't oh get a God. second chance. We gotta move, Shepard. That's a Roger huge that. bomb. We're on our way. That has to be enough to like destroy their entire civilization. That's crazy. With Cerberus evacuating, the bomb should be clear. I don't think so. I'm guessing we're going to take it. My God, he's a terrible driver. <laughs> he just wrecked it to the wall. Oh my God. Oh, man. Yeah, with them leaving, I don't know. I think something else, something else is going on. Something's not right. Oh, he's setting up a turret. Oh, dang, I didn't get him in time. Yeah, he set up the turret. Great. Is there anything over here to grab? No. Okay. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Thought I was about to die. There's some meds. Whoops. Turret control. Turret control schematics. Looks like control schematics for automated turrets. No good now, but they might be useful later. Okay, so it's like a side quest thing. Nice. Okay, nothing over here. Damn it! Cerberus has a hit star. We're close. Come on.
All right, there's the bomb. I'm at the control panel, Commander. Cerberus set up a firewall around the trigger mechanism to slow us down. I need to create a bypass. That'll take time. But like you said, no trigger, no explosion. Can you do this? Are you sure you can disarm the trigger? Yes, it's old tech. I know what to do. Oh, Find okay. me a few minutes, Commander. You have your back. Don't screw this up. Yeah, he needs this. Um, he has a lot to owe to his crew. We'll make sure you have the time you need, Lieutenant. Understood. Starting bypass. And thank you for making sure I get this chance. Oh. Just make it right, soldier. Oh my God. <gasps> Look out, Commander. Focus on the bomb. We'll handle Cerberus. All right, so we have to try to keep him alive while he hacks into it. Yep, Lieutenant Victus. Yeah, there's like a health bar over here. Okay. Nobody gets past us. Clear? Clear. Here come reinforcements. I need more time, Commander. There's a ship over here. I'm gonna grab some ammo real quick. Here they come. Need more time. Okay. Side now. I'm gonna grab some ammo from mid. Watch for more shuttles. Almost there. Okay. Is he still there? How is he still alive? After all of that, that's crazy. Okay, I think they're finally down. Shepard, that was insane. Oh no, a mech. Okay. Oh no, someone's down. What's this? Oh, it's another one of those guns. All right, let's shoot it. Whoa! That was actually pretty cool. It was like an electric shockwave. All right, let me get my sniper back out. I've got another wave coming. <gasps> that scares. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Commander! Firewall's down. I'm in. <laughs> Spirits. Cerberus hacked the trigger uh. mechanism. It's set to... Disarm it. No time. I have to separate the trigger from the bomb. Now. No. Cover me. Separate the trigger from the bomb. So he has to go manually do it. Oh man. What a brave soul. I could not do that. My knees would give out and I would fall off. <laughs> I would be dead. Is that it?
tell me that he's at victory at any cost. No. Come on, you can still make it. Just pull yourself up. Oh. took a lot of casualties, Joker. The Primarch's son included. Understood, Commander. Joker out. He never hesitated. Whatever he was before, he'll be remembered for this. Aww. What will the Turians think about this, Garrus? Hard to say. Sacrifice and more is expected. He did us proud, but we're a hard bunch to please. Living your life for the cause. Society first, platoon first. It's all just expected. He did what he had to do when it counted. Yes. Yes, he did. Oh, man. Good work on Tachunka, Commander. Stopping that bomb prevented the war between the Turians and the Krogan. We can't afford that kind of division right now. Yeah. Joker said the Krogan are recovering the bomb? They moved in. Won't allow Turians to send in recovery crews to help. Understandable. The situation is fragile at the moment. With Rex and the Primarch aboard the Normandy, you've got a situation brewing. We don't have a solid alliance between those two yet. Keep the peace, Commander. That's an order. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Heck it out. We couldn't risk another galactic war with the Krogan. The Genophage wasn't enough? You had to plant a bomb on my planet? The decision was made hundreds of years ago. So much has changed. Not enough to tell us about the bomb, coward. Hey. Oh man. We need to move on. You're both wrong. Yeah, we need to we need to move on. It's like he said, it was a long, long time ago. It is unfortunate that they didn't tell him what was happening, but with everything going on right now and all of the tension, I honestly don't blame Primarch Victus for keeping it hush hush and trying to just get the bomb out before anyone noticed. It was honestly a good thing that he was trying to get the bomb out. We can't let the past rip us apart. Working together, we have a chance. Yeah. Primarch, you had a bomb on Tachunka. And Rex, in the Turian's place, you would have done the same damn thing. It's true. Shepard. It's over. His own son died today making this right. Please, Commander. It's all right. Yes, fine. Shepard, you made your point. We have stronger enemies to face. We do. <sighs> I understand your reservations before, Commander. But I hope you now understand the secrecy. You paid a high price. Your son fixed this. Yeah, he paid for the... He paid in his son's life. I understand the secrecy now. To a point. And now it makes sense what he said about... Would you say something if you knew that the fate of Earth was in your hands? It definitely makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, you paid a high price. Secrets get people killed. You've learned that the hard way. Yes. The hardest lesson I'm ever to learn, Commander. Oh. Gosh, I feel so bad for him. His son died with honor, but it's... It doesn't... My son... He died with the respect of his men. I wanted to thank you for that. His sacrifice will be recorded in the histories of the Ninth Platoon. Something any father would be proud of. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, 
that was a lot to unravel. It definitely wasn't how I expected it to go. Obviously, I told you guys what my thoughts and theories were behind the bomb. What now? Like, what now with Cerberus? Are they going to try to pull? They're starting so much stuff. It really makes me want to, like, go and talk to the elusive man and just... I don't know what I would do. I would probably just call him a bunch of names and then hang up on him. <laughs> I just don't understand why if he's so pro-humanity, why he's doing all of these things that are hurting it as a whole. We can't stand up against the Reapers without all of the races working together to try to annihilate them. And he's putting all of his efforts into the dumbest things. Like, if he is so pro-humanity, why isn't Cerberus troops and all of this crazy indoctrinated troops that he's made, why aren't they going to Earth and helping fight the war against the Reapers? Why isn't he standing beside Captain Anderson and giving them troops to try to stop all of the mass death that's happening on Earth right now? It just seems highly suspect so we did get a new turian black watch um score so we have plus 75 for that one which is actually really really good there are rumors that rumors that sarin arturius well, were part of the black watch before becoming a specter although given his youth when he joined the turian army it seems highly unlikely <laughs> what a weird tidbit to add there Again, Commander, thank you for ensuring my son died with honor. It's all a Turian father can hope for. But this is war. The time for mourning is later. Is there something you need? That's sad. No oh, one can talk about his son. Despite everything, Primarch, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Commander. And I know I'm not the first to lose their son to this war. Needless to say, I'm committed to stopping the Reapers. Okay. That's all. Of course, Commander. Let's go see what Rex has to say about everything. I know he's very... I feel like... I just feel bad for Rex. There's us that's like smack talking him about the genophage. His friend, his friend Shepard is just giving him flack and then he finds out the bomb on Turian world uh, the bomb because of the Turians it's just he's he's going through the it Turians pull another move like that Shepard and this alliance is off just bear with me Rex this is hard for all of us I've got reapers on my planet a bomb that almost blew up my planet and if those two fail the genophage to make sure we all go extinct anyway I don't want to hear about who has it hard yeah understood good is there something you need? Yeah, there's a lot going on right now for Rex and everything. It's just... It's not great. That's it for now, Rex. Let's get back to work. All right, then. I feel like the best thing that we can do for him right now is to go rescue those Krogans that are lost and need help. That is that is the least that we can do for him right now. I do for don't have colonies. You can't bomb them or you're bombing what's left of your own planet. They make their own soldiers out of our civilians. They don't have supply lines. How do you beat something like that? I'll let you know if I think of something. Hopefully the crucible, whatever it does. Order, Chief Engineer Adams would like to speak with you down in engineering. Adams? I heard what Victor's did. He was a brave man. I don't think I could... Uh there I go again. I was going to say that I could never do that. But? But I was wrong. Being here, watching you, you've shown me what it means to serve in the Alliance. You're a good officer, Trainer. Glad you finally realize it. Thanks. Not that I'm volunteering for bomb jump duty. <laughs> I'd suggest sending someone who has armor first, if possible. Look at that galaxy map. Do you know how many strategy games are built from that interface? You play strategy games. <laughs> a few. Most are too flashy, though. I prefer chess. I have a set made from rose quartz and hematite back home. Ooh. I like the feel of something solid in my hands. Well, now that I know your weakness, we might have to try a game. <laughs> It'd be more fun than playing Edie. Edie doesn't sweat. 
<laughs> you sweat playing chess? Depends on how much fun we're having. <laughs> Commander. Uh, that's really cool that she likes to play chess. I don't really know how to play chess very well. There was a really good TV show. Um, I think it was on Netflix, but it was called Queen's Gambit. And it was super good. If you like chess, if you like um, kind of like slow burn storylines that are really juicy and drama filled, check out Queen's Gambit. It's a really good show on Netflix. I watched it a while ago. Edie doesn't pilot the Normandy. She is the Normandy. No, she's a passenger in the Normandy, just like us. The ship was a spacefaring vessel before Edie even existed. Engineer Donnelly is correct. The Normandy SR2 was completely spaceworthy prior to my installation. See, Edie agrees with me. <laughs> Edie's mind and the Normandy are a whole entity now. You couldn't just move the processors and the AI core to another ship. Engineer Adams is correct. Processes that contribute to my self-awareness are spread throughout the ship. See? Edie agrees with me. But unlike Edie, our brains couldn't have existed without our bodies. That is a requisite from being organic. You have to look beyond that limited definition of life. Joker pilots the Normandy. He doesn't take over Edie's body when he does that. When Edie controls the ship, she is piloting, just like Joker. Edie doesn't pilot the Normandy. She is the Normandy. Yeah. No, she's a passenger in the Normandy, just like us. The ship was a spacefaring vessel before ED even existed. I Engineer Donnelly is correct. Feel like the SR2 was I'm gonna go with Adams on this one. ED can direct the Normandy with her thoughts. She sees, hears, and feels through the ship's sensor arrays. The Normandy is her body. I've seen ED's body, and its curves are a fine sight better than the Normandy's hull. <laughs> so what do you think, ED? Are we more than our thoughts? I'm done. Any more of this and my head's gonna explode. Yeah, it's a difficult predicament. I didn't know who to side with because we've seen Edie and we've seen how she's changing and she's becoming more and more of an actual person in her body. Um, but like she says, she still has things going on that will not make her fully organic. Like she has smell receptors, but she can't tell good smells from bad smells. And there's a bunch of other examples of ways that she is the Normandy, even though she is now in her very physical form. Um, so yeah, that was a hard conversation to side with, but I see both, I see both sides, but I had to go with the more logical. Commander, remember the problem I mentioned about a core overload possibly venting into the engineering compartment? Oh yeah. Daniels, Donnelly, Edie, and I have been brainstorming and comparing notes. You see, the venting occurs when IES sinks are in a back cycle at the same moment the main core is at peak draw, such as from sustained kinetic. What Kenneth means to say is that we're pretty sure we can make the system safer. We just need a GX-12 thermal pipe. Unfortunately, we're cut off from Alliance supply chains. Could you keep an eye out for one the next time you're on the Citadel, Commander? I've got the specs right here. Okay. I know why we need it. They just said to make it safer. Um, but we'll ask anyway. Are these modifications really necessary? <laughs> it's a safety issue, not exactly critical. Under extreme conditions like heavy bombardment to the kinetic barriers while traveling at peak flight speeds, plasma can vent into this compartment. It would vaporize anyone standing in this room. That sounds more serious than just a safety issue. Yeah. Well, under those conditions, odds are you're about to lose the entire ship anyway. But we want every advantage we can get, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. We can use any upgrades. The Normandy, we learned that at ME2. Any upgrades are good upgrades. I'll look for one the next time we go to the Citadel. <clears throat> Thanks, Commander. Okay. Those FBA couplings you got us are still holding up. Nice. Nothing to report. Shepard. Need anything, Commander? We haven't talked to him in a long time. Oh, look, we can talk about Ken and, da and Gabby. How's Engineer Donnelly working out? The kid's got talent. Now if he could just learn to shut his damn mouth. <laughs> Problems? I'm sorry, Commander. Donnelly is dedicated, knowledgeable, and thinks on his feet. I'm glad to have him on my team. Could use a lesson or two about respecting chain of command, but I've handled the likes of him before. No need for concern. <laughs> chain of command. How's Engineer Daniels working out? Her, I like. She's sharp and knows propulsion theory better than most physicists I've met. And she's easy to work with, too. 
Always said you had an eye for talent. Good job bringing her back to the Alliance. I'm so glad that they're back on board. I think it's really cool. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, ma'am. I am gonna go check in with Javik since we are on the floor already. After that, we're gonna go Your head out. Your would have made a good addition to our empire, Turian. You are cunning. Uh-huh. And by addition, you mean slave race. Subservient race. Right. Calling it that makes all the difference. But you did not go far enough. Either you should have detonated the bomb on the Krogan world, or used it as leverage. I think we were just trying to guarantee peace. A static mode of existence. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Nothing struggles. Nothing grows. On the upside, we all get to live another day. Nice chatting. Yeah. Uh, Javik. Javik, Javik. There is some enjoyment in speaking to this Turian. His knowledge of war is formidable. Though he would be an even better marksman if he had four eyes. <laughs> like you? Back when the Krogan rebelled, I would have detonated a bomb that day. There was no need for the genophage. Yes? So he would have just annihilated the entire race other than the genophage. That's why I said it was like, I know it sounds strange, but it was a kindness that they decided to do the genophage instead of just detonating a bomb. The bomb was just more of like a fail safe. It's all really bad, but I do, I do see it. Commander. And understand why they did what they did because things were really bad during the Krogan rebellions, at least from what we've seen in the Codex. All right, I'm gonna go up and just touch base with Edie and Joker and then we'll head out from there. Although I kind of want to talk to Garrus and see if he... The will hold. Pound for pound, they're the best fighting force in the galaxy. Pound for pound is irrelevant, given the significantly higher mass of Reaper forces overall. That's why we're bringing in the Krogan. <laughs> you gotta love the Turians. After they beat you down and sterilize you, they strap a big old bomb to your planet. You know, just in case you get uppity again someday. <laughs> I'm just glad we disarmed it. Damn right. The Krogan are pretty tough. I'd rather it be Reaper asses getting kicked and not ours. True. Very true. Commander. What's new, Edie? Admiral Anderson reports that the Reapers on Earth are broadcasting orders. They are demanding human leaders enter their superstructures in order to negotiate peace. Anybody aboard a Reaper is going to be indoctrinated. Yeah. Exactly. This is a ruse to pacify the populace during that process. Citizens who are busy waiting are not busy fighting. It is likely that the governments of Earth will soon enact laws punishing those who attack the Reaper occupiers. Again, this will be done in the name of peace. Oh, Tell Anderson we're moving as fast as we can. Oh, that's terrible. Hello, Shepard. That's so terrible. It's very smart of the Reapers, but anyone that hasn't been believing us about the Reapers or hasn't done any sort of like research on it, I could see them going and seeing what they want and trying to negotiate peace. Oh, that's terrible. All right, I just want to touch base with Garrus real quick just to see if he has anything new to say. Rex, I was just as much in the dark as you. Honest. <laughs> That's what I needed to hear. Just making you sweat, Garrus. Wasn't sure you could. You're always so calm. I'd be happy to give Krogan some lessons on relaxing. <laughs> and we'd be happy to feed you to a thresher maw. Rex out. <laughs> and next time, Shepard, don't let him near the intercom. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't know what Turian came up with the idea, but a doomsday bomb was damned ingenious. Embarrassing now, but ingenious back then. Yeah, it's it's not great look now that everything has transpired and they left the bomb there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if the genophage like wore off and things got bad again, then they always had that failsafe. So 
It makes sense. It's awful, but it, it does make sense. I'm glad Rex is taking this so well. My people haven't exactly treated his kind with charity over the years. Yeah. Maybe later. Say that again? <laughs> the population of the colony world of Tyvor has been killed. <gasps> I don't understand. The Reapers have been taking people alive. It was self-inflicted. When Reaper forces invaded, Tyvor's colonists detonated nuclear weapons inside their cities. Oh my god. Goddess. Their deaths would have been instantaneous, Doctor. Thank you, Glyph. That'll be all. That's terrible. An entire world just detonated from their own nuclear bomb. That's... I mean, I guess it would have been, like, a better death than dealing with being indoctrinated and everything else that happens when the Reapers come, but it's awful to think about. Oh, man. Busy? I have time if you'd like to talk. In fact, I could use the distraction. What's on your mind? How long it took the Reapers to eradicate the Protheans, and how long they'll need for us. It took them centuries to conquer the Protheans. We're not quite so widespread, but it would still take at least 100 years. It's selfish, but I keep thinking that if we fail, I'm only 109, Shepard. I could live to see the entire cycle come to an end. <laughs> that young. <laughs> 100. Only 109, huh? I know. It must seem strange to complain about a thousand-year lifespan. I used to think it was sad that most aliens live such short lives. Maybe it's not such a privilege to outlive so many. To witness so much death. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to live that long. Sometimes I think about if I would want to live longer than our lifespan is. And I usually, like, end up saying, like, no in my head because I feel like seeing other death. I mean, if all humans could live that long, maybe things would be a lot different. Things wouldn't be so strained on doing things in the right amount of time. I feel like if everybody could live to a thousand, maybe I would like to do that. But I, I also, in the same time, <laughs> I'm not sure. Would you guys want to live longer? Then, you know, whatever the age span is now, 70 to 100, if you're if you're lucky. I don't know. I feel like our lifetime and our lifespan is is enough for humans, but it would be really interesting and cool to see what happens over the time of a thousand years. You can't give up. The war's not over. Yeah, the war's not over. I feel like we've barely even started our side of it we're still trying to get ready for it we're still trying to create that device and get everybody to play nice so that we can work together the war is definitely not over yet don't drive yourself crazy about this liara we're still in the fight yeah. only because you're still driving it forward we finally have other leaders on our side but none will take us as far as you can sometimes i wonder how you do it it's all for you someone had to <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. It's all for you. Every time the world's about to end, I think about how mad you'd get if I didn't stop it. <laughs> I don't know if I could do this without you. Flatterer. I try. <laughs> Flatterer. I'll see you soon, Shepard. Well, that was nice. I was just talking about this last episode, how we haven't really had a chance to talk to Liara again since the very beginning. So that was nice. Working on anything? I'm helping decode some of the Crucible's designs, or trying to. Theoretical particle physics based on specialized base 12 mathematics aren't exactly my specialty. And Javik is his usual forthcoming self. <laughs> I'd trade my last hundred years to resurrect even one Prothean scientist to help us. Instead, you got a military one. I've never seen Krogan move with such purpose. It's a little terrifying. Yeah, they're definitely getting angry and starting to form together. Thanks for coming by. There's a lot going on with the with the Krogans right now, though. It's at your service. They haven't had a good 
time during this entire Reaper start. There's so much going on. Rex wants to secure the genophage. They're trying to get to do that. The Turians have this bomb that they found out about. They okay, so we should definitely go help help the Krogan with whatever's going on with the Rachni. I think it was titled Rachni, wasn't it? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Attican Traverse, the Rachni. Okay, so yeah, we should definitely go try to help out the Rachni. Okay, so we're definitely gonna go try to help the Krogan now. Now is as good a time as any because Rex really needs some good news. I feel like we've let him down, the Turians, and he's getting on Garrus, and he just, he really needs some good news. So if we can go out there and save some Krogan for him, I feel like that would put us hopefully a little bit better on his good list. Because we need it. We definitely, definitely need it. All right, so you took. Looks like this is where they are. You took as habitable, extreme temperatures, and violent weather have discouraged colonization. Because the planet has little liquid water to remain retain heat, surface temperatures regularly oscillate between 70 Celsius to negative 60. Yutuk's vegetation is notable for having evolved flexible central stalks to survive high-speed winds as well as leathery leaves to shrug off the planet's frequent sandstorms. Animal life is mostly confined to the planet's small oceans and has few valuable minerals. All right, so for this one, I'm going to take Garrus and Javik again because I took them on my mission when we first went to go figure out the stuff with the bomb. So I want to see what Javik has to say about another like military operation. This time it's the Krogans. I'm just, I'm interested in that dialogue between the two of them. I think I'm going to keep the loadouts the same too. I don't think I've really looked at Javik's loadouts though. We also have the new rifle, the Raptor. No, 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 that's not new, is it? Harpoon gun, viper. Yeah, I guess it was the raptor. No, in scissor. That's the new one. All right, so let me take a look at this. Damage doesn't really look like it's that great. It looks like it's one of those sniper rifles that have a high fire rate and a higher capacity, um, but the damage is just not there. So I'm gonna stick him with the harpoon gun still. Actually, this is my loadout. So yeah, the mantis. Javik can stick with the particle rifle and the scorpion that he's got going on. I think that's still good for him. Phased in. Okay, so they can both roll with the particle rifle. I think it's fine. Um, hopefully. throw this into cryo ammo increase freeze duration or squad mates gain cryo ammo at 50% effectiveness ooh this is a tough choice I don't know 50% effectiveness um I think I'm gonna go with the freeze duration being longer six seconds is a pretty long time um and it would help us be able to do some more crowd control with that six seconds. So I'm going to go with the six seconds. Let's go ahead and throw this into overload. Hit one additional target within eight meters with 60% less damage or increased damage by 30%. Usually I use overload to do a like a double, um, there's a word for it. When you use one attack and then you use the next one, um, a bonus of some sort, there's another word that I'm thinking of, but I can't think of it right now. So I probably gonna do like the additional target one. I think that one's better, even though the damage does increase a bit. 
I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one. Plus this end one is like an increased damage by 15%. And we can hit another target too. That would be awesome if we could hit three total. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. And then Javik has some upgrades. Let's go ahead and do slam for him. Increase force, impact radius meter. Yeah, let's do force. And I think that's all we can do for him. Okay, nice. Any updates, Shepard? Our backup's waiting for us at the drop point. Arlac Company, Krogan Commandos. That's correct, Shepard. They are an accomplished unit. Their decisive action in liberating a colony from Batarian pirates made them famous. Good to hear. Other than that, there's been no word from a team of Krogan scouts since they went through the Rachni Relay. Understandable. In my cycle, we use the Rachni as living weapons. Weapons? They were only animals then, without technology. Violent, but useful. When they became a problem, we burned 200 worlds to stop them. We don't know much, but no Rachni activity has been reported. It doesn't make sense. We let that last Rachni queen live on the condition she disappear forever. Yeah. She wouldn't risk everything to start a war. Just be ready for anything. Yeah, shuttle just arrived. <gasps> you better get moving, Team 2. It's See grind. anything, let me know. Oh, it's Grunt? grind. Shepard? <laughs> Shepard! <laughs> oh my god. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Didn't those idiots lock you up? They did. Put me in lockdown to keep the Batarians off me. Didn't want problems with the Council while they prepared for war. But the situation changed. Yeah, they got bigger problems, all right. That's why I'm out here running Arlac Company. They're tough, think they're invincible. Reckless, but effective. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to you? Sounds familiar, Grunt. How'd you go from being new and unproven to your own command? Yeah, wasn't easy. When Rex put Arlac Company together, he needed a leader who represented the future of our species. Thanks to you, I completed my rite of passage on Tachanka and became part of Plan Erdnot. I was an equal. And being the strongest, I was chosen to lead this honored company. I bet some didn't like a tank bread Krogan being in charge. I collected a few scars earning my place here. These Krogan respect me. Oh, it's so good to see Grunt again. He was so excited to see us too. That brought like a lot of warm feelings to my heart. Um, I'm not I'm not surprised that he's a commander. He was tank bread to be the perfect Krogan. So he has all of the strength, all of the power, all of the war mind that a Krogan has. So I'm not surprised that he already earned his place amongst the Krogan. Plus having Rex and knowing that they have a history together where Rex actually helped him do his first Thresher Mall experience. Um, I'm not surprised that he put him in command too. And it's really, yeah, it's really good to have him here. You were a pain in the ass, Grunt. <laughs> but if you're Krogan or half the soldier you are, we might make it out of here. Eh, <laughs> glad you're here to crack some heads, Shepard. Hard to believe this might be Rachni. Seems crazy. The yeah. Rachni. <laughs> Chance to face the old enemy? <laughs> Impossible to resist. Yes, you are the one. The Krogan who occupied my quarters on the Normandy left your mark. What? Who is this, Shepard? You shouldn't be so anxious to face the Rachni. They were formidable opponents, even to my people. His face. Ask me later. <sighs> Whatever you say. We don't know if the Rachni had anything to do with this. We're here to find the scouts. I didn't see any signs of activity during our approach. Agreed. But this place smells wrong. Like a bad wound. Our scans show the tunnels down there lead to a large central point. If we're lucky, it's a nest. Sounds like fun. Just like old times, Grunt. Heh <laughs> <laughs> Company! Move out! 
Grab what you need, Shepard. Meet me at the scout camp ahead. Sounds good. Okay. Grab what I need. So yes, you stuff here. Okay. Oh, it's so good to see Grunt again. I'm excited that he is the one that is doing this mission with us. I was wondering when we were going to run into him again. A claymore? Like the shotgun claymore? I think that was an ME2. Yeah, it looks like a shotgun. <clears throat> Some salvage parts. Man, I wonder what's been going on with the Rock Knight. Like, like Gary said, it seems a little strange that the Rock Knight Queen would start causing problems after we saved her. She said that she would disappear, but something had to have happened. Their base camp has been decimated. The Krogan are overconfident. It's their weakness. Being overconfident? Yeah, probably. I could see that being a Krogan weakness. I'm also glad that we brought Javik because he could comment about the being in Grunt's room. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it was a shotgun that we picked up. Um, yeah, Claymore. Look at the damage on that thing. Wow. Seems like a nice shotgun. Um, we also have this Raptor. The damage on it is awful. This should not be all the way down here. That's as much damage as like one of our pistols that we first started with does. That's no, 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 no. The point of having a sniper rifle, in my opinion, is to one shot, one kill people. There's nothing else over here, right? Scary. A long way down. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It was definitely a long way down. It's very echoey Ready, here. Shepherd, we're right behind you. Okay. What's this? Spare parts. I'm guessing we're going down there. We're trying to. Okay, let's see if we can talk to Grunt. You ready to go? What have you been up to? What did you do after the Collectors were defeated? I spent most of my time back on Tachanka learning what it was to be Krogan. In the lab where I was created, the lessons were like fighting with practice weapons. They had no bite, no impact. I needed the blood and pain. I made mistakes, but I learned. Makes sense. Tell me more about this company. Arlak means Eye of Wrath. We are named after the fierce Tichanka son. Rex handpicked us from different clans to show a united Krogan. We were sent because we're the strongest. That's actually really smart. Did Warlord Okir imprint anything on you about the Rachni during your creation? Okir ensured I knew of the Rachni. They are respected as an enemy. Everyone thought they were dead. Defeated by the Krogan. You prove that wrong. If they're here, my blood demands they die. What happened to the scouting party? Looks like something dropped half their camp down a hole. Their shuttle must have been lost as well. They weren't going anywhere. Doesn't matter. We're here to find the Rachni and burn them out. All right, let's go. All right, let's get going. <laughs> Finally. Right behind you, Shepard. Okay. Nothing in here. <gasps> Jeez. Oh my god, my heart. I'm surprised it didn't scream. Everyone all right? <gasps> Shepard! Oh my god. You in one piece? Looks like we're all okay. Keep in radio contact. On our way. Okay. Well, that's one way to start the mission. Putting your best foot forward. Shoo here. Ahead of us. I see it. Yeah, what is Grunt, this? Got a body of a scout here. Been dead a few days. Yeah. Aww. If he has his weapon, grab it. You won't need it anymore. It's a flamethrower. Ew, what is this? This seems really bad. Is that webbing. Looks like it. 
Darkness is going to make it a little harder, Shepard. Agreed. No Everybody kidding. Oh, this is creepy. I hate this. <gasps> Anybody catch that? Confirmed. No, 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 no. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I see something. Yeah, what are these pods? They're like... I'm scared to touch it because I don't want stuff to come out of it. <sighs> Nothing in there. God. Nothing in there. All right, I'm going to try to hit one. Careful. We need to be cautious. They're dangerous. Okay. I think we have to go this way. I just don't want to get near these things. They're so gross. Oh, they like explode when you get near them. Hmm, this is gross. Oh, look at these Those wires. Cords, yeah. Maybe. It definitely looks like Reaper technology. I was noticing that when I was looking at the egg over there. I was like, those look like the Reaper cords that like the husks and everything had on them. Man, so that could be what they're doing down here. They've probably been indoctrinated or something, taken over by reapers and converted into... I don't even want to know. Okay, let's get some more of this. Oh, God. Okay. I had to make sure I'm not getting near the pods. Cause they hurt when they run into you. They explode. Lord, all the noises in here are disgusting. <gasps> Ew, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh, God. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get my sniper rifle back up. I don't know what that thing is. Oh no! No! Oh no! Oh. Okay, we've had a death. We've had a death. We need to be more careful. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna like run over to my right. Um, I feel like there was a bit more, actually I might just run to the left. I think there's more cover over there. Okay, let's go. All right, let's switch back to my rifle here. I still need to get some, uh-oh. I haven't moved these on to the board. What have I been doing? All right, time to switch back to the pistol. I need to be way smarter about this. Apparently, I didn't put anything on the skill tree yet. What have I been doing? Do I have these on my... All right, so let's put that over there. Um, And probably slam. Actually, I might switch slam and dark channel. Okay. Let's switch to this gun. Yep, 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 yep. All right, let me switch over to my pistol because they're about to come around this corner. And we'll put this on there. 
they're over here. Okay. Dang. That thing is unforgiving. Absolutely unforgiving. All right, let me switch back to my rifle. I think they've pretty much taken down the husks. Holy crap, that was insane. And it has little tiny like babies coming out of it. Oh, so gross. Man, whatever that thing was, did some damage. All right, so let me grab this over here. Shotgun shredder mod. <laughs> More ammo for the fire thrower. More ammo. Okay. What's that? I hardly recognized him. Reapers made some modifications. Yeah. Grunt, Ragnar presence confirmed. Modified and very dangerous. Finally, something to kill. Of course, Nothing he's excited. Yet. Lost a Krogan to a sinkhole. Oh there no. We go. The breeding ground must be here. The Reapers are protecting an asset of great significance. All right. Look at this. No question Reapers have been here. Yeah, Agreed. definitely not. Let's find out why. I mean, isn't it obvious to take over the Rachni? More bodies to fight for them. Blocked, Shepard. Copy that. How are we getting by this? Okay. This looks important. This? <gasps> that did it. How did it just move that thing? That was weird. <clears throat> oh no. Uh, our exit is cut off. Great. Looks like we're finding another way out of here. Come on! What was that noise, Shepard? Sounded bad. Kevin, we're all right. Good. Didn't want to dig you out. Oh my god. Oh, that hurts my feelings, Grunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so gross. I don't like this at all. The like squishy sound of the pods breaking and I'm scared to see what kind of mama reaper rachna I'm dealing with. I'm not ready for that. Okay. Shepard, I know what happened to the scouts. <laughs> What'd you find? They got hit hard. The leader ordered them to carry weapons deep into the caves. He knew the next team would need help. They died making sure we could make it to the central chamber. Come on. Hang on. I'm gonna switch to this gun. Oh, okay, he's dead. Looks like there's a lot to burn, and I don't want to run out of ammo. Looks like a last message. He's asked that it be delivered to an Asari named Arabo. No! Oh, no! I wonder if I have to give her that message. It's the blue roses boyfriend or husband or whatever he is to her. I think they're married. Oh, that's so sad. That's gonna be a hard message to give if I'm the one who has to do that. Man. That's sad.
A large area, Commander. Expect trouble. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yep, here we go. There's another one of those things in the center of the room. The barrier engine or whatever. I don't know what that is. That looks like a Krogan on a spike, though. Another one of those Ravengers. <clears throat> okay, I wonder if I should grab this gun again. Oh, we're not ready for that. Okay, there we go. I don't think we read the codex about them either. Let me take a look at that real quick. I do need like a second break. This is a this is hard combat. are former rachni that the reapers have transformed into heavy artillery <sighs> through a process of implantation and genetic modification. As walking organic turrets they can sustain and inflict considerable damage. Yeah, for sure. Ravagers bear egg sacs that continuously spawn swarmers. If the sacs are destroyed either during combat or upon the Ravager's death, their entire contents burst forth to charge the enemy and explode on contact. Oh, dang. A dead Ravager expels a caustic gas and an acidic puddle. Alliance scientists have theorized that it is easiest for the Reapers to maintain control over units of rachni genetic extraction because of the species' neurological predisposition for hive mind consensus. Dang. Easier for the Reapers to maintain control because of the already having a hive mind consensus. That's terrible. I was wondering in the back of my mind because I remember setting the rachni queen free and being confused and i think we read it forever ago back in mass effect one in the codex about how the rachni queen could not be indoctrinated because she also has the power to indoctrinate but her children do any sort of offspring from the rachni mom can be indoctrinated um man the Reaper weapon. Before the introduction of the M560 Hydra, missile launchers either focused on bringing down a single armored target or simultaneously neutralizing multiple unarmored opponents. With the Hydra, a soldier no longer needs to choose between the two. The Hydra releases a barrage of miniature missiles, each guided by an independent homing system that seeks out exposed enemies. On impact, Three shaped charges per missile explode in sequence. The first overloads the target's kinetic barriers before the second destroys its armor, clearing a path for the third warhead to detonate inside the target. Dang. I thought it was some sort of, like, electric thing, but it was a bunch of mini missiles. That's crazy. All right, I think that's it for the codex. That was a nice breather for a second. <laughs> I don't know how much more of this we have. Kind of seems like we're just getting started in here. Whoa. These poor Krogan. I wonder if they're Stay all. Low. Don't let it get a beat on you. 
If they're all green like that because of the acid that they leave behind, or if they're just that way. But they're all like green colored. It's weird. something. What is that noise? I want to go see if we can like look at this broken up here. Oh, that's so sad. Like if they would say something about it. How did he get there? I thought it was like one of those reaper spikes where they get like indoctrinate or like they turn on but yeah i don't know what happened to my my flamethrower some heavy fighting tough bastards casualties it's fine krogan fight better angry krogan fight better angry <laughs> oh I just want to see what that is over there. But I have to clear these out first. What is this? Okay, it's some Reaper tech, so that was worth it. Um, all right, I'm going to try to run past these ones. What's the bug? Okay, good. Another flamethrower. Oh, ew. Oh, there's like things coming from them now. No! Oh, this is my worst nightmare. I hate this. Gosh. I can't wait to be done with this one. I This is not my favorite. I don't like it. I don't like any part of any of this. This is different. The Reapers must have changed them. They definitely look different. Kill it with fire. I do like how we're given like a flamethrower. That's pretty nice, I guess. Dealing with these egg sacs, just have to kill them with fire. It's so gross. Have you ever like squashed a spider and it was pregnant and a bunch of little spiders came out? That kind of is like what reminds me, like what it's reminding me of and it's freaking me out. I've had that happen to me one time and I was like outside in the garage and I was pretty small. I think I was probably eight or nine and I stepped on a spider and it was huge and a bunch of little babies came out of it and it was, oh, I will never forget. Never, ever I forget that moment. Yeah, that's, like flies. And that's what I think, too. Well I, mean, it adds up. I agree. And they're throwing everything they've got at us so we don't reach the nest. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely what's happening. Okay. I'm just going to try to run for it with, the, with these. I don't... So gross. Come up here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I think they'll follow me eventually. Are those the Krogan? Is that the Krogan team? Shepard, we're blocked and getting overrun. Okay. Hang on, Greg. <laughs> oh my gosh. Push him off the ledge. <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> I was wondering if he was gonna say that during our time today. I was wondering. The old I am Krogan. 
I kind of miss when he used to say I am grunge because it reminded it reminded me of Guardians it's of the Galaxy. There, Come on. Okay, so let's destroy this node. Oh, it's backing away. Thanks, Shepard. That wasn't webbing stopping us. That was Reaper Tech. We ran into it too. The Rachni have backed off for now, but they can smell our wounds. Any worthy enemy would regroup and finish us. Soon. We're close, Grunt. Those barriers were protecting whatever's down that passage. We'll dig in here, kill anything that moves. Buy you some time. Good luck. I don't need luck. I have ammo. <laughs> Krogan, get ready! The little smile at Grunt. It's so good to have him back again. His, like, comedy is... is much needed and appreciated. <laughs> All right, so we're going this way. Into this gross More eggs. area. Yeah. I don't know if I... Oh, there's something back there. Okay. Some Reaper tech. Okay. I don't think there's anything else over there. What's this? Oh, no, no, no. <sighs> What is that? <gasps> Grunt, we've located the central chamber. Good. We got your back, Shepard. <clears throat> Move it! Damn it! What in the world? Locate the power node. Okay. The power node. Is that it? Have you it okay, let me get my other gun out. Anything over here? I'm gonna grab this ammo. Nope. Okay, there's a swarmer over there. So here's another node. Let's destroy this one. Come on, nice. get past these barriers. Let's get to the other side. Okay, there's some more Reapers. Over here. That's coming. Run, Javik! Alright, 
Wait, was that it? Jeez, spicy. All right, let me pick this gun back up, take this ammo. I don't think we go in there. This place is nuts. Okay, I think the door that opened was like back over this way by the Krogan. Oh, nice, drop more ammo. The yeah, this one. As as they were in our Stay okay. Oh boy. I think it's still alive. I can't tell, but I think it is. I need this flamethrower. Yeah, it's still alive. All right, it's down now. That was crazy. I didn't know that Husk could throw grenades. Has that always been a thing? I feel like that has not happened before. <laughs> I don't remember them being able to throw grenades. All right, so let's blow up this one over here. Take this ammo. Okay. Keep it up, oh my god, there's two over there. the rock. <laughs> Messed up. Grenade. 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 Okay, we're okay. We're okay. I'm gonna use some meds again, unfortunately. Okay. Dead. What was that? Yeah, that was a big scream. Copy that. What could have scared them? Oh my god. No, no, no. What are you? The last queen. We listen for the children. They are silent. Follow. The, the machines come and take them to war. They die alone. Silent. Far away. Aww. The Reapers did this to you? Yes. The sour note of the machines is everywhere what happened i let you go back on novaria you promised not to interfere anymore the rachni were supposed to disappear we remember we kept our promise retreated back through the relay we started a new home beautiful children Harmony. But the machines came. They heard our song. 
Their shriek of power notes drown us out. So they did try to go and be peaceful, but the Reapers found them and they took over. I don't think that the Rachni Queen is a puppet. Um, like I just said before, she can't be indoctrinated, but her children can. So I have a feeling that, yeah, it's probably over now. They can't hurt you anymore. Yes, we understand. Can you still feel the Reapers? Can they influence you? We hear the machines. But they cannot control us. Remove this last shackle, and we are free. The children return. They will destroy us all. Really fast. Oh, boy. We're getting movement here. A lot of movement. Copy that, Grud. Are you capable of fighting the Reapers? We hate the machines. We will fight for our unborn children. Really fast. Oh boy. She's badly wounded. She needs too much time to escape. Yeah, I don't think. Shepard, we're out of time. We stay here. Our left company dies. Is that clear? So if they stay. Oh no! If we stay here, I'll let our lot company dies. Is that clear? Oh no. I don't want, I d I'm worried that if I let her escape, then Grunt is gonna die too. Cause he's part of the Arlot company and we don't need more Krogans to die. Rex, we went out here to do this mission because I want to give Rex some good news. I can't let his entire company die. Oh man, what do I do? Two hours later. I feel like I should help her escape because I, I. <sighs> Two hours later. I don't want to just let her die now. And I also, I'm just nervous that Rex, or that, that Grunt isn't going to make it. Oh gosh, what do I do? The whole reason why I came out here is so that I could give Rex some good news. I don't want Grunt to die. If I help her escape, I'm really, really nervous that Grunt could die. But I also have stuck by the Rachni Queen since the very first game. And I feel like I should help her now too. I can't just leave her here to die. She's been used and abused by the Reapers now, and I'm gonna help her escape and just pray that Grunt, that Grunt will, will make it too. Listen up. Arlat Company holds the Rachni off while the Queen escapes. We'll buy you some time. Oh man. Grunt. Fall back to our position and lead us out. Damn you, Shepard! I'm leaving my team! On my way! Commander? That's an order. She's too valuable an asset to lose. And that's ultimately what chose my decision, too, because she could be a huge asset. She could be a huge asset for us. I hope. Now get us out of here! down that path. I hold Grunt, them off. Grunt, no. No. Get out of here, Shepard. No, please. My turn. <laughs>
We're the last ones out. Copy that, Commander. Shuttle is waiting. situation commander this could have gotten complicated fast i hope you know what you're doing cutting a deal with the rachni queen we got burned last time i'm trusting your instincts commander we can count on her support admiral i hope so but we cut the reaper supply of new rachni troops and picked up some additional krogan support i call that a victory i've got to get back to it commander watch yourself out there hack it out Shepard, you made it out of there. Sounds like I missed a hell of a fight. Oh, man. <clears throat> I thought that I had really, really, really messed up there. I knew there was a chance that I could have killed Grunt by doing that, and I didn't... Uh, the music and him falling off of the cliff, and I thought that I... I thought I murdered him. Besides Caden, I haven't lost anybody else on my team. And I feel like that is gonna change in this game just because I feel like last game we got really, really lucky in not losing anybody. And I haven't really had to deal with a death since Caden. And Caden's death oh, still kind of hurts a lot. Besides some of the other miscellaneous crew members, like that is the only major teammate that I have lost. And I thought that I was about to add Grunt to that list today. I think the kitty cat knew that I was upset because she started looking at me like, are you okay? And now she's laying on my lap. <laughs> oh, so sweet. She started looking at me as soon as I started like tearing up. She was just like, are you okay, mom? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that was really scary. I thought that I had definitely murdered Grunt for a second. It was bloody, Rex. We could have used you. Too busy talking rather than fighting. Feeling restless. A war going on and I'm stuck keeping the peace. I heard you made some kind of deal with the Rachni Queen. If they get out of hand again, it's your ass on the line. Understood. I heard Grunt managed to get out of there with a few scratches. You could say that. We'll get him patched up, back in the fight. Good to hear. I should get back to it. Keep me posted, Shepard. All right. So let's see what kind of war assets we have now. We're almost at 2,000, which is super exciting. I don't know if we could have gotten more or less if I hadn't have chosen to save the Rachni Queen. Because I feel like he said, yeah, we got a hundred from the Rachni workers. I don't think that if we would have chose to sacrifice her, we would have gotten. Hi. Thank you for the kissy. <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like if we would have cho chosen to sacrifice her, then we probably wouldn't have gotten this a hundred points. So. I feel like I made the right decision in saving her, but gosh, was that rough to watch Rex or um, er, Grunt almost die. I don't even know what I would have done if I had just murdered him. And we also have Grunt now. He adds 25 points to our board as well. All right, so let's go around and talk to everybody. I don't know if Grunt is on board. It was really good to see him again, though. It was it was a nice bit of like. It was fun to fight alongside of him and have his funny remarks again and all of that stuff. I feel like. It was an emotional 
emotional ride, but I'm glad that he he survived because I, I like I said, I don't know what I would have done if I had just killed Grunt. I probably, for the first time ever in a game, would have gone back to a previous save and just sacrificed the queen because I don't think I would have been able to live with myself. I say that now, but I, I probably I probably would just live with my choices, but I don't know. I would have felt felt very lost if I had just murdered Grunt there. We could be on the front lines. Why have they got us guarding a door anyway? Who's gonna break regs right now? War makes people stupid. Besides, you talked with Moreau? Electors invaded this ship and kidnapped the crew. Damn. Okay, I guess we gotta be ready for anything to come through that door. Commander, you've got a new message at your private terminal. Okay. You know, my lab studied the Rachni. Long distance communication with no time lag, the ability to control workers, and at close range, the Queen can even speak through dead or dying members of other species. Glad they're on our side. If we can develop instant long range communication without quantum entanglement, maybe when this war is over. <laughs> Commander? All right, let's see what these messages are. My project from Liara. Shepard, I've been working on something that I'd like to show you. Can we meet in your quarters when you have a moment? My quarters? Okay. I'm gonna go check in with Joker and Edie, and then I guess we'll head to my quarters and see what Liara has been working on for us. Interesting. <laughs> All right, here's another one. Uh, dates back to the Rachni Wars. So a Krogan and a Solarian have landed on a Rachni world for a top secret mission. That is unlikely. Solarians rarely took part in raids on Rachni occupied worlds directly. <sighs> Missing the point. So the two guys are climbing up a hill going through this nasty green fog. And as they get near the top, they come out of the fog and the Solarian sees thousands of Rachni. He looks over at the Krogan and says, Oh, well, that makes me nervous. The Krogan says, you think that's scary? When this is over, I have to go back down through that fog by myself. The implication being that the Solarian soldier would be dead. <laughs> yes. Thank you for killing the 2,000-year-old joke. That joke plays to racial stereotypes on both sides. The Krogan appears brutish and insensitive, while the Solarian appears weak. Stereotypes such as exemplified here led to the development and use of the genophage. Well, well, yeah. It's also one of the only jokes you'll hear both Solarians and Krogan telling. Comedy isn't really about being nice. Sometimes it's a way to air out the ugly things people think. Isn't that the truth? I started realizing that when I wa started watching stand-up comedy, probably back in like college days, but they harp on a lot of like real world issues and then they make this spin on them to try to make them funny. And sometimes they go a little bit too hard and then I kind of just have to like turn it off because it's not really comedy anymore <laughs> at some points. Um, but I get where Joker's coming from, but I also very much understand where Edie is coming from. And I think that the world has kind of changed a lot since comedy back when I was in college. That was like back in 2010. So comedy back in like 2010 all the way to 2024 almost. Gosh, has it really been that long since I've been out of college? Um, yeah, that's a that's a long time, and things have changed in the comedy world where people are more like Edie now, where you try to be a little bit more mindful of stereotypes and not playing on other people's weaknesses. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that it is a good thing. How's Grunt? Our little tank baby's all grown up, huh? Take baby. Apparently he'll be on his feet and killing again in no time. Well, he learned from the best, Commander. Every time he incinerates someone with a shotgun and does that little laugh, he'll think of you. Edie says it was Rachni down there? Yeah. I thought they were on our side after you saved the Queen on Novaria. It wasn't her fault. She got captured. She's with us now. <laughs> Until the next time the Reapers sing a sour yellow note of whatever. Commander? Yeah, it's unfortunate what happened to the Rachni, but it wasn't the Queen's fault they were being used. Shepard, I had a question about human behavior. Why is it you never have questions about Asari behavior or Turian behavior? 
I tried asking Liara questions about the Asari bonding process. She said I do not guard the secrets of the Normandy's crew carefully enough for her to entrust me with such private information. The Asari word she used translates as blabbermouth. <laughs> I think she has become a more private person since becoming the Shadow Broker. Tell me about it. She has actually. Hello, Shepard. Been a little bit more of. Yeah, she's definitely changed since she's became Shadow Broker. I do agree with that. I'm excited to see whatever this is she has in store for us up in our quarters. I don't even know what it could possibly be. Hopefully my fish are behaving in here. We've got company. Liara, you had something you wanted to discuss in my cabin? Yes, I'll be right up. Come on in. Thank you. Could we sit? I've been thinking about the knowledge we gathered on the Reapers, and how easily it could be lost again. So, I put a plan in motion to preserve things for the future. What's this? A record of the galaxy. Information on the Reapers, relays, different cultures, and blueprints of the Crucible. But there's one entry I wanted your opinion on. Which one? Your own. I'd be honored to have your input. How would you like history to remember you? Oh my gosh, Liara. thousand years is a long time for a computer to sit around. Please, I was an archaeologist. I know what I'm doing. I'm encasing these records in time capsules and seeding copies on multiple planets. And while it's not foolproof, the VI I'm installing has every translation and linguistics program I could find. So it's an information guide like Vigil on Ilos? Yes. I've been preparing it for some time. And it will be a privilege to guide the future discoverers of these records. Have you decided what you would like Dr. Tassoni to write in your entry, Commander? This is so thoughtful. I'd like her to decide. Just be honest. Make me inspiring. I think that if anyone was to write a biography for people to see the future, <laughs> in the future about Shepard, I would just want her to write it. She knows best. Liara has held us in her heart since the very beginning moment that we have met her she's she's such a kind soul i can't believe she did this you know me well enough to fill in the blanks liara are you sure yeah i'd like it to be your call all right let's begin with the fact that earth's most famous officer was born and raised in space Shepard was also a deadly tactical fighter. Most enemies never saw her coming. She was a soldier and a leader, one who made peace where she could. And it was a privilege to know her. Careful this doesn't sound like a diary. I can't help myself. You're a good friend, Shepard. You've been there for me too, Liara. No, I haven't. I wish I could have joined you back on Ilium. You made up for it. Well, I suppose I did just write your name in the stars. Oh my gosh. That was so sweet. That was amazing. Leave it to Liara to do something amazing like that. Oh, my heart. That was so wholesome. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's it for today. I'm really glad that we could end on that wholesome note with Liara. It was really, really sweet. I know that it's kind of morbid in a way because if 
she's setting it up so if we don't make it or if something happens to us or something happens to the future of all of the races they will have something to remember everything by and she saved the everything that there was about all of the reaper ships on there as well as the crucible all of the information on that and shepherd like my heart is just it kind of in a way puts things into perspective how much Shepard has had to do with shaping the past, the present, and the future of what is going on here. It was a really, really, really beautiful moment. And it's something that I'm glad that we could end on that beautiful moment because it just, it warms my heart. I feel like I have nothing else to say about this episode <laughs> because I'm just so taken back that Liara would do something like that for us. So today was pretty spicy. There was a ton of combat, which I honestly really, really enjoyed. I feel like there have been a couple episodes where all I do is talk and read through the codex and form relationships and character building, which is something that I really love in this game, but I equally love the combat. And we finally got to have a full day of just combat. And the Rachni stuff was actually pretty challenging. We've had our first couple deaths in there and I just, I, I loved the challenge. I thought it was really, really amazing. So I'm glad that we could get into more combat today. I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with our abilities and all of that good stuff. I tried to use the mini map, the mini radar today for you guys, cause I know a couple of you have brought it up, how I need to make sure that I'm looking at the mini radar and I'm trying. I'm trying to do my best with that one, but I feel like I focus on headshots and abilities more than I look at anything else. I will not get it right 100% of the time, but I'm trying to be more mindful about the mini map and using it. Overall, I had a ton of fun today and we unraveled some more stuff about the Rachni, how the Reapers are kind of trying to take over. We unraveled more about Tuchanka and the real reasoning behind the bomb. We unraveled more about Cerberus and that they pretty much just want to cause chaos and mayhem everywhere that they go. And I loved running into Grunt again, having his comedy and just being his normal Grunt self with us was a really awesome time. And I'm glad that he survived because I really thought that I had killed him there for a second. So I'm glad that he's alive, doing well. We did get the Rachni queen's workers which gave us a hundred war asset points today which is huge as well as grunts 25 so i'm excited that we accomplished everything that we did today i thought it was a really really great day i think we made a lot of really good decisions for hopefully the future and then to top it off with liara today was just it was perfect. It was a really, really great episode. Next time I am gonna hop in and finish up some more of these N7 missions that we have, cause we have a lot of them. There's some stuff back on the Citadel that we can go turn in. There is the two N7 missions that we have, Cerberus Abductions and Cerberus Attack. That is my plan for coming in next time. Go to the Citadel, go turn in some more quest line stuff, go try to figure out if I can purchase that piece of tech that the engineers want down below so that if anything happens, <laughs> they don't get vaporized. So I think we're gonna do that next time. Go head to the Citadel, pick up some stuff, drop off some side mission things and work on some N7 missions. I'm looking forward to a little bit more combat next time. I have a feeling those N7 missions are gonna get juicy. I always love an opportunity to kick Cerberus where it counts and try to put a stop to their evil, malicious plans. And I will see you all on the next one. Bye everyone.